We don't have a uh, little intro sentence. Normally we say, this episode of this show is brought to you by us. Oh, right. Exciting people doing exciting things. Us. Check us out on this show. I might actually play that. <laughs> Speak, friend, and enter. This is the Mac Observer's Daily Observations Podcast for Monday, the 19th of September, 2022. I am your host, Ken Ray, joined today by Jeff Butts, Managing Editor of the Mac Observer. Greetings and salutations, sir. Hey, Ken, how are you, man? Doesn't matter. There is no time for that because we got so much stuff to cover. Uh, second part of today's show, I'm going to let you know how I am making my old iPhone feel new with this year, and I'm hoping Jeff has a tip or two for that as well. I, I, that's going to be a surprise for him. Don't tell him we're talking about that. Also, uh, who the heck do I think I am? That's coming up a bit later, but first, lots of people actually did get or are getting new iPhones. Uh, remind me, Mr. Butts, you are not one of them. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I wasn't terribly impressed with what Apple announced, um, mm -hmm. especially not on the 14 standard models and not even on the 14 Pro. Um, you know, call me crazy, but that I was really looking forward to that deep purple, and I thought they were going to have kind of a, a shimmering hue to it, like what they did uh, on the 12 with the, oh, what color was that? Now my brain's going blank, but they didn't do it. And so, um, yeah, unless somebody makes me an offer I can't refuse, uh, I'm just going to hold off for at least a couple of months. Okay. A couple of months? That's like I'm just not upgrading yet. It well, I mean, to me. at least a couple of months. All you right. Know, unless, um, it, it, in my line of work with what I do, I tell myself, no, I'm not going to upgrade. And then I realize that I just can't cover the things that I'm covering without having this silly thing in my hand. I will tell you, um, and this may sound crazy for the first show that you and I are actually publishing, uh, but part of me doesn't even want to talk about the new iPhones. <laughs> and it's only because I think there's only one real lasting story here. And even that, I'm not sure how long the story is going to last. It's the shift this year from the consumer end of the line to the pro end of the line which uh, looks like a really real thing. I think last week I said that if I had ordered an iPhone 14, just the base model, that was going to be like a six-day wait. And it turns out that's only because we were six days out. I uh, Before we recorded Sunday, I actually did go through and run some, uh, run some checks on how long it would take me to get what. So checking a 128 gigabyte uh, deep purple, not in your honor, just because that, that looks hot to me. Yeah. Uh, checking the deep purple 128 gigabyte iPhone 14 Pro unlocked, if I had ordered it Sunday, would be a wait of about four to five weeks. Now, if you bump that up to the uh, Pro Max, you're looking at a wait of about five to six weeks. And I went through right. and tested different capacities, different colors, and none of that changed any of that. Your mileage may oh. vary because I didn't go for, oh, what I really want is a gold 512 gigabyte. I mean, I just kind of poked around. But all right. the different places I poked around showed me the same thing. Did uh, you check the carriers? No. I don't have that kind of time. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i on Mint, man. I'm on uh, – <laughs> ah. and even when I wasn't on Mint, I would for years, I would buy uh, my phone unlocked because I thought I might want to go to Mint or I might want to go right. someplace else. I might finally – you know, get rid of uh, the Death Star, um, which is what I called them at the time, and finally did. And I'm glad I made that choice. But um, no, I didn't check the carriers. That's, again, why I say your mileage may vary. I also yeah. didn't check uh, Best Buy or, you know, any other place that I might have been able to go and get one. Right, right. Yeah, from the Death Star, if you order the 256 gigabyte deep purple, uh, I looked at it on Sunday just doing some research and uh, September 22nd to September 26th, I think is what it came back as. That's not bad. Now no. that was, that's the deep purple for the pro or pro max. That's the deep purple for the pro from, okay. from the death star. All right. Not bad. Uh, practically no wait for iPhone 14. In fact, no. I would go ahead and say no wait for iPhone 14. If I had ordered on a uh, Sunday, they would have delivered it to me on Tuesday unless I was willing to pay them an extra $9 uh, 
in which case they would have driven it to me from my local Apple store that day. Yep. So I so I could have had it yesterday, as people are hearing this on Monday, uh, or I could just you know not pay the nine bucks and get it on Tuesday. Or if I had felt like leaving my house, and why would you? But if I felt like leaving my house, I actually could have picked up one yesterday from my uh, from my local Apple store. iPhone 14 Plus, by the way, still not moving at all um, from that October 7th date. And that's going to be interesting to see if it does change as we get closer to that time. I have a feeling they're not going to change it right now, even if orders were, you know, through the roof, which I, nobody thinks they are. Right. I don't expect it to change at all. Okay, so... Ready availability for iPhone 14 might sound kind of bad and might sound kind of bad for the Plus as well. But it's what's interesting is, despite the fact that I could walk in and pick one up today, uh, analysts don't really care because they're just so jazzed by the uh, 14 Pro and Pro mm-hmm. Max uh, performance. Uh, Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives thinks there are a few reasons for that. The lack of differentiation between the 13 and the 14, last year's consumer grade 13 and this year's consumer grade 14, as well as the huge incentives being offered uh, by carriers this time around. And then Evercore analyst Ahmed Darianani is kind of saying the same sort of thing, saying uh, given the data that they see and assuming that supply is better than last year, because that's an interesting thing, this time last year we wouldn't have known like, okay, why is it taking so long? Is it because so many people are ordering the Pro, or is it because they're having trouble in the supply chain? Right. Indications this year are there's no trouble in the pl- supply chain. We're back to saying the reason Apple can't get you an iPhone 14 Pro is because too many people want them, or so many people want them. I don't think Apple would say, no, 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 too many people want these. No. Yeah. It's a it's a good problem to have, is what they tend oh, yeah, to say. Absolutely. 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 Uh, taking a look at stuff in China, it's interesting. I got a bit nostalgic. I was reading an article in the South China Morning Post that said that there were lines out the door and around the block at uh, stores in China, and that there were still gray market sales. There were still uh, hmm. people who were like, you walk out of an Apple store, some guy hits you up and says, hey, I'll give you, I think it was the equivalent of like um, $170 over what the guy who had just come out of the Apple store just paid. Mm-hmm. It's like $170 U.S. over retail, right? But then they would turn around and try to sell them again to somebody else for more. And it's so weird to me that that works because why wouldn't you just have pre-ordered? I could see it working over the next few weeks maybe because they're also looking at a six to seven wait week or a six to seven week wait at this point. So, yeah. Although uh, they're actually selling the iPhone 14s at a loss. Huh. Which, ouch, you know. Yeah. If that was your business ouch. plan, not cool. No, no. So I had said at the start that it felt to me like the one lasting story out of all of this is the buying pattern. Is everybody mm-hmm. moving to the pro? And obviously not everybody has moved to the pro, but everybody moving to the pro. And I can't help wondering about next year's iPhone, not the phones themselves, because I know there are already lots of rumors out about the phone for next year, and I don't really care right. about that. What I'm curious about is, will the buying pattern stay the same? Is everybody going to buy a Pro next year? I mean, because I can think of a few reasons that, that they wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to come down to, does Apple make it a significant enough upgrade for people to finally pull the trigger on the on the consumer model they didn't do that with the 14 Mm -hmm. you know um other people have said it i've said it they should have just called it the 13 s um they added they added one graphic score Mm -hmm. to the gpu and two gigs of ram (laughs) Ooh ah. Well, I'm glad that they're off the whole S thing because that sort of sets up that sets you up for disappointment in a way. Well, yeah. I mean, it kind of what, the reason I'm wondering about it now is because okay, there are lots of people on the iPhone 13 who maybe buy the consumer grade every year, but this year there was practically no difference. Maybe a little right. bit of difference in the color. Maybe that graphics, you know, bump is maybe even being a little generous. I mean, there's really not enough reason to go from the 13 to 14 unless you're just somebody who always does that. But if you're somebody who always does that, chances are you were the person who was spending the extra 200 bucks to get into the pro phone anyway. Mm -hmm. The thing that I'm wondering about is will the carrier subsidies be there in the same way next year? 
because there might be people who are like, yeah, I want a new iPhone this year or I get a new iPhone every year. And maybe they normally stay with the consumer side just because it's so inexpensive. But we're seeing carrier subsidy, subsidies, excuse me, like we haven't in the past or recently anyway, is that to stay ahead of what they anticipated to be a bad sales period because the economy is so wacky at this point. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, it, it, we're, we're only speculating, but mm -hmm. um, probably. I don't remember which one you're answering now. Uh, whether they're they're offering the subsidies to make up for the fact that they were expecting a, a bad buying pattern. So you think this year might be anomalous as far as those subsidies go? I I, I want to say yes, but right. um, I'm, I'm starting to learn my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> as, right. as soon as I as soon as I say something, they turn around and do the opposite. Right. Um, I'm starting to think my house might be bugged. Wow. I love the fact that you use the term bugs because I was just about to ask you if you wanted to talk about the bugs in the phones. And again, oh, yes. I would, okay, you do. All right. Because I would argue really quickly, unless they end up being something awful like battery gate or antenna gate or, you know, the debacle on the Mac side with the butterfly keyboard. Right. I personally don't think the bugs are going to matter unless we're still talking about them in a week or two. Why do you want to talk about them? And then which ones do you want to hit? Well, I, I think the biggest one for me, um, well, two of them. Mm -hmm. The the 14 Pro and Pro Max models locking up in the middle of an iCloud restore. <laughs> okay, that's not good. I, I, no. I agree with you. That's not good. You'd think they would have tested that. Yeah. Uh, under, you know, <laughs> as close to real world conditions as they could. Yeah. Um, and the other one was the uh, the iMessage and FaceTime activation bug. <laughs> Well, but they, they solved that one before it even happened. With the uh, You're talking about the thing where if you were running iOS, you tried to use the phone right out of the box, there were problems with iMessage or FaceTime. But if you ran the update that Apple issued last week, iOS 16.0.1, that took care of it. Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the I don't know. That just bothers me. That That should have been... That should have been fixed before they even shipped. Well, okay, but I think you're being a little hard on them. I mean, look, I got no problem being hard on them on the on the, the data copying thing. And it's easy for me to say, eh, it's not a big deal that the iPhone 14 Pro froze as people were moving their data from their old phone to their new phone. Because, you know, I wasn't one of those people this week. Right. I assume they've still got their 13s that they can hold on to. Apple does have the most ridiculous... I mean, it's basically turn it off and turn it back on again. What Apple is saying right now is if you're in the midst of that and your phone freezes for five minutes or more, then they suggest doing a hard restart. I assume that means that you can actually go ahead and try again and it will succeed. In the meantime, at least a piece from Mac Rumors says um, uh, that Apple knows about this and they're looking into it. Right. Um I, I think you're being hard on them for the other one, though, because once they found it, I mean, they basically fixed it before anybody had a chance to experience the issue. See, I thought you were going to go for the one with the camera. Uh, yeah, that that bothers me, too. But uh, there were people that did get bit by the the iMessage and FaceTime activation bug, because not not in, in not every instance did that update come through for them before they tried to activate their messages of their FaceTime. Okay, but and so they had they had to take another workaround. I think they had to. Um, I now my here's my mind going blank again. But I think they had to deactivate and then reactivate their eSIM hmm. in order to work around that. But there was a workaround. There was a workaround. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, I, I'm that one. I'm having a hard time being upset about because. People knew, I mean, Apple knew about it and addressed it before it came out. I want to mention one other one really quickly, and this is going to be a subset of a subset kind of thing. Oh, the camera thing, by the way. Apparently, third-party apps like Instagram and TikTok and uh, Snapchat, um, they're getting some sort of vibration in the camera, like down to the fact that you can see it vibrate and hear it. Right. It's not just the video. Only happening with third-party apps, not happening with Apple's own camera. So I think it was, who was it? 9 to 5 Mac. Their assumption is that it's a problem on the developer side, and the only fix is going to be when individual developers update their uh, individual apps. There's one other one, and this is the subset of a subset that I'm talking about. Apparently, iOS 16.1 beta for developers on the new Pro or Pro Max is killing GPS for some people. 
So if you're a subset of that subset, hopefully that's not your only phone because you're a developer and you should know better. You should than running that on mission critical stuff. But you know that that's kind of a that's kind of a big deal if you're one of those developers that works on apps that use the GPS. Absolutely, but it, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, the only reason I'm not so worried about that one is because it's such a relatively small number. Right. And of course, Apple does have a, a, a solution for that. Bump yourself back to 16.0.1 if you're using it on yep. a mission critical machine. Which again, yeah, that's between you and your uh, dog. Hey, coming up in just a second, we'll talk about ways to uh, make your new phone know. Your old phone kind of feel like new. They're stupid ways, and I'm practically kidding. First of all, though, I want to let you know about another show we would like for you to check out. It is Mac Geek Cab. If you're a longtime listener to the Daily Observations, you probably know Dave Hamilton and John F. Braun. They're the hosts of Mac Geek Cab, and each week they provide tech support to as many listeners as they can while learning at least five new things weekly themselves. Matt Geek Gab has been uh, providing these tips, cool stuff found, and answers to your questions about all things Apple for over 17 years. Tips like if you press and hold the mute button during a call on your iPhone, that's going to put the call on hold. And by saying reply with audio to Apple's virtual assistant, that's going to let you record an audio message, which is great when you're driving or, you know, you just want to be heard. If you've got an Apple anything and you want to learn more about it, visit MacGeekGab.com or search for MacGeekGab on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Again, it is MacGeekGab.com or look for the show MacGeekGab wherever quality podcasts are served. Jeff Butts is with us today. He is the managing editor of the Mac Observer online at macobserver.com. So you honestly don't sound like you're bummed that you're not getting a new phone because you are you seem like 70-30 that you're getting a new phone in the next couple of months anyway. Uh, yeah, I think I might be, but I, I know what you're getting at. And, you know, yeah, when, when Apple comes out with a new model and it just it doesn't start that, that need to upgrade itch. Yeah. I do feel kind of let down. Um, you know, I've come to, you know, even though I've I've only been using Apple products and following Apple News since roughly 2007, mm -hmm. I've come to expect them to have the next best thing. And when the next best thing is only meh, then, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer. See, I'm coming at it from a different angle. I'm just like, because I'm only... I've been every other year, a couple of times, I think it was the third year before I actually went and got a new phone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not bummed that Apple didn't give me anything that I had to buy. I'm just bummed that I'm not buying whatever Apple's selling. Because even on the years that they give you something absolutely amazing, if I just got a new phone last year, chances are I'm not getting one this year. However, I do a tiny bit of retail therapy, usually about this time of year. I just buy a new case and it makes my phone feel new to me. Okay. This year, though, I took my case off. Now I'm wondering. I'm wondering. No. I'm wondering if I did that in the hopes that I will accidentally break my phone and then go. I might as well just get a new one. If you <laughs> if you did, you haven't been watching <laughs> Apple's promo videos. You know, every now and then I go back and watch that video where that woman dropped it off that ride in Orlando. You know, and the phone oh, falls yeah. for like 15 seconds and then hits the ground and it's still recording. Well, yeah, no, I'm I'm thinking of the of their promotional video uh, about a month and a half ago. Yeah, um, where the phone's ringing and it vibrates itself off a high top. Yeah, uh, bar and it's fine and and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. relax, it's iPhone. Yeah, plus I've got uh, I've got Apple Care Plus, so that'll take care of it. And we'll see. There you go. Even so, a naked iPhone. Shame, yeah. shame, shame, shame. Yeah, I'm kind of into it. I'm kind of excited by it. For the first time in years, I'm not I'm not using a case, and I feel free as the ether, my friend. I'll try to talk you into it before we're done. Uh, the other thing, the thing that I, of course, miss this year is I don't get the uh, Dynamic Island. But have you heard about this game called Hit the Island? Yeah. Yeah. So Hit the Island, for people who don't know, it's kind of like a Pong game is what the most of the articles I saw said. Although I think of it more like Breakout. And they have a thing... Where basically, you know, it drops a it drops like a ping pong ball down on a paddle, and then you try to hit the dynamic island. But here's what's great: if your phone has a notch, it still works with that. 
So I feel like I'm what? getting one. Yeah, I played it earlier today on my iPhone 13. So it still works. Oh. It's, and it's fun. And it makes you think just for a second, you're like, see, I got the dynamic island. And then you sit there and wait for it to tell you something. And then you realize, no, but I have a pretty cool game. Free, by the way, says it's offers and that purchases. I couldn't find those. Maybe they're just leaving it open to do that at some point. But yeah, uh, yeah. I might not sleep tonight. Uh, no, I mean, it, it's fun, but it's fun for like five minutes. Yeah, there's a okay. there's a word game that I will tell you about later that will keep you up at night, <laughs> but we'll save that for another time. This is feels a tiny bit self indulgent, but I would like to take the last couple of minutes. And I know we're running a tiny bit long, but you know it's our first show, so bear with. I want to take a couple of minutes and just introduce myself to people who maybe don't know me from other stuff that I've done. Um, hi, I'm Ken. Uh, started in audio, radio specifically, about 30 years ago, doing production behind the scenes stuff. Ended up working at a business news station in San Francisco where I started writing business news and tech news uh, before I got to go on mic at a tech TV radio. And then I made the sensible choice of moving to the middle of nowhere and becoming a country DJ. Not kidding. Uh, got <laughs> out of radio for a couple of years. And then I went back to San Francisco and back to radio. Got back into production, back into behind-the-scenes stuff. And uh, and there I met a guy named Scott Shepard, who uh, had a show called Inside Mac Radio. And it, Scott was a friend, and I started doing a daily show for him. Around the same time, I started working with a financial analyst named Rob Black on both his radio show and his uh, television show, all focused on business and investing. And so everything that I've done has always come from sort of the business side of things and the Wall Street side of things. Scott and I parted ways after about a year on Inside Mac. And then in January of 2006, I started Mac OS Ken. That is a daily Apple News show and news related to Apple News that turns 17 next January, which, uh, if you do the math, is a lot of time talking to myself about Apple. <laughs> Though there has been uh, a lot of other stuff that I've done in there, talking to other friends and other acquaintances and other people about Apple as well. Now, what's interesting, I don't know if you know this, Jeff, I actually talked mm -hmm. to the people behind the Daily Observations before this show even started. I don't remember how many years ago it was, but they had talked to me about possibly coming to host the show. Oh, okay. And I had a bunch of other stuff that I was working on at the time, so I could not make that work. Um, I will say... I have known the show's original host, Jeff Gamet, for years. I've known his successor, Kelly Gamont, for years. Um, I hope that I can call them both friends. And I will say that I am honored, and that may sound like I'm overstating it, but it's not. I am honored to be able to follow along uh, behind what they did and see what we can do next. Yeah. So I do want to say thanks to the people at the Mac Observer for giving me this opportunity. Uh, like everything I have ever done, I have no idea how it's going to go, uh, but I feel good about it, you know, so, uh, yeah, you and I probably won't always agree, but, you know, it'd be boring if you listen to only people you agreed with anyway. I am glad you're listening. I hope you'll continue listening, and I look forward to spending as much time with you as uh, you want to spend with me. So there we go. Uh, if you have a question or a comment for this show that you want to send our way, there are a couple of great ways to do it. Observations at MacObserver.com. Observations at MacObserver.com is our email address. You can also hit us up on Twitter. I am now following and participating with the Twitter account for this show, TMO Daily. TMO Daily on Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow me online, I am at MacOSKen on Twitter, and you can also check out my website, macoscan.com. Uh, Jeff, if people want to keep up with you, what is the best way to do that? Well, I'm not sure why they would want to, but if they really need to, they can find me at macobserver.com. I'm on Twitter as at Clefmeister, that's C-L-E-F-M-E-I-S-T-E-R, and I manage the at Mac Observer Twitter account as well. Advertising for this show handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com The Daily Observations is a production of the Mac Observer from the latest news to product reviews your source for Apple News is MacObserver.com
www.thebeatdown.com. Thebeatdown.com.